Now, I'm going to bet there's a decent number of you out there that have recently seen this news story. President Trump now promising to sign an executive order to phase out plastic straws and other single-use items across the federal government. They want to ban straws. Has anybody ever tried those paper straws? They're not working too good. Mr. Trump posting on his social media site, True Social, back to plastic. Yep, that's right. Current president of the United States of America, Donald Trump, earlier this week signed an executive order forcing government agencies to stop buying paper straws while calling for a strategy to eliminate them nationwide. And this move would essentially pave the way for the return of plastic straws. Now, I'm not a politics channel and I'm not really an overly political person. I find the whole thing pretty mundane and really divisive. So why am I making a video about Donald Trump? Well, during the signing of this particular executive order, Donald Trump and his pals chuckled about paper straws and specifically, he said this. And I don't think that plastic's going to affect a shark very much as they're eating, as they're munching their way through the ocean. Oh, oh, oh Donny, Don, Don Aldo. No, that little throwaway comment isn't quite true. In fact, it's not true at all. Plastic in all its various forms absolutely does impact sharks as they're munching their way through the ocean. And how exactly do I know that? Well, because I'm the scientist who wrote the scientific research papers on just that, the impact of plastic pollution on sharks. So join me today as we delve a little bit deeper into the topic of plastic pollution and sharks. We'll look at the research that I wrote and we'll find out exactly what this paper straw ban means for the ocean and the animals that live there. Welcome back to another Shark Bites episode, everyone. Everyone. Thinking back, the shifting tide on plastic, I'd say, probably started around 2018. I remember watching Sir David Attenborough's Blue Planet 2 on the BBC, and I think there was a specific episode that highlighted the impact of plastic on a variety of marine species. Just off the top of my head, I can remember there being shots of whales playing with bits of plastic, turtles entangled in plastic fishing nets, and then albatross chicks that had eaten so much plastic they were just dying. It was horrendous. I'd been learning about this for years during my undergraduate degree at university, but I think this was the point people were first inspired to start doing something about it because they were just watching in real time the devastating impact plastic was having on the marine environment and some of the most important marine species. Before Blue Planet 2 came out, I was just starting my masters by research at the University of Exeter here in the UK. I knew I was going to be working with sharks and my research area was going to be about anthropogenic pollution, which is basically pollution that comes from humans. And at the time, the scientific community really had no idea how plastic might be impacting sharks and rays. There was a few anecdotal reports here and there in the scientific literature, but no concrete evidence or analysis of any kind. There'd been tons of plastic pollution research on turtles at the time, and I think a little bit on seals as well, but there was next to nothing about sharks. And so I set out to change that, to try and fill in this knowledge gap that we had in the scientific literature, and to try and figure out whether sharks were even impacted by plastic at all. And if they were, what exactly was happening? Now, plastic tends to impact marine species in two different ways. You've got the ingestion of it or entanglement within it. Some species may be more predisposed to one of those two impacts, and others are heavily impacted by both of them. It's got a lot to do with the species itself and where that species lives, both geographically and within the water column. So the first part of my research was looking at sharks and entanglement via a literature review. And it was a pretty mammoth task. I basically had to systematically scour through decades of scientific research and collate together all of the different cases where sharks have been entangled in some form of plastic. But because I already knew that reports of this happening in the literature were pretty scarce, I knew that I was going to have to supplement the review with another piece of data collection, one that was a bit more modern and one that hadn't been done before. So I paired the literature review with some data mining on social media. Specifically, I looked at Twitter. And this again basically entailed me scrolling back to the first ever tweet that featured the hashtag shark and entanglement or marine debris. I used a bunch of different keywords. And let me tell you now, that was a lot of scrolling. I think I went back from 2019 to the first tweet, which was in 2009. 10 years worth of tweets. And then I just scrolled back up again, slowly, tweet by tweet, writing down all the cases where someone had tweeted about a shark or a ray that was entangled in some form of plastic. These days, the software for being able to do that automatically is way better than it was back then, so that would have saved me a lot of time. But by combining the literature reports with the reports that we were getting from Twitter, we were able to get a much better picture of what was going on. In total, we found over 120 different cases of shark or ray entanglement, and that impacted over a thousand individual animals. And throughout that entire process, I had the unfortunate job of sifting through the images of sharks and rays that had been killed or maimed in horrific ways via plastic.
plastic pollution, some of which you're seeing on screen now. Many of the sharks that you're seeing here have been essentially strangled by bits of plastic debris that's come from humans. For example, plastic package strapping bands that you often find on crates, elastic bands, plastic rings from beer cans. This one here has been strangled so badly by a polythene plastic bag, it's literally started to decapitate this spot tail shark. Then we've got polypropylene ropes. These were particularly bad, often seen trailing along the side or just off the fins of large sharks like white sharks or whale sharks. But this particular one here got the headlines. This is a short fin mako shark entangled around the head slash gill region with plastic fishing rope. The shark had been entangled for so long that barnacles had started to grow on the rope and the shark itself had started to grow while being restricted by that rope. So much so that it had caused scoliosis of its spine, which had basically started to twist and distort. It was a really grim discovery for the scientists, Nick Wegner and Dan Cartermill, who came across the shark back in 2012 and they decided that they were gonna help try and free it. After hooking the shark, they managed to get it close to the boat where they eventually cut the rope and freed it. Based on the research paper that they wrote about it, they tagged the shark at the time as well and that tag stayed on for at least two months before it popped off and then the shark disappeared. I did come across this video recently which appears to show a short fin mako shark with very similar injuries to the entangled one I just showed you. There was some discussion as to whether this may have been the original short fin mako that was freed back in 2012, although I'm told by Chris, the owner of the footage, that this particular shark here is a female and the one that was freed was a male. And so it's a somewhat worrying trend that another mako shark here off the west coast of America has a scoliosis injury, almost certainly from entanglement. Many of the sharks in my entanglement research paper though weren't as fortunate as the makos we've just seen. And the vast majority of individuals that were discovered to be entangled died as a result of that entanglement. Based on the data we had available to us at the time, we were able to conclude that while entanglement wasn't happening at high enough rates to cause huge population declines for sharks, it was absolutely an animal welfare issue. An issue that causes needless pain and suffering to individual animals. An issue that we as humans have the ability to stop. And we were also able to conclude from the research that this issue was likely incredibly underreported in the scientific literature and had been underreported probably for the last 50 years. And this means that even though we think it's not happening at levels high enough to cause population level impacts, it's likely happening at far higher levels than we think it is, which is a problem. Because if you don't know how much something is happening, how on earth can you expect to solve the issue? The paper itself got a bunch of media attention at the time, and I even ended up on Sky News here in the UK Bruh. talking about it. And it's also been cited in the literature over a hundred times, which isn't bad going. But after it was published, we weren't finished. What we needed was more data, more information to highlight the materials entangling the sharks or where it was happening more commonly or the species that were being the most impacted. And that was when Sharon was born. Sharon! No, not that Sharon Aussie, Sharon, the Shark and Ray Entanglement Network. Because we didn't have that much data, we created a platform in collaboration with the Shark Trust here in the UK where people could submit their own sightings of entangled sharks and rays. We simply didn't have the manpower or the eyes to be able to find and locate every single shark entanglement that was happening in different places around the world. So we created a citizen science platform for people to help us. That way, when someone came across a shark that was entangled in plastic on the beach or maybe saw a video of something similar happening on the internet, they could then submit that to Sharon. After Sharon went live, hundreds of reports started flying in from all over the world, especially the east and west coast of America. Now, I can't talk to you guys about the data that we got from Sharon because it's going to be used as part of a future scientific publication. So you guys will just have to sit tight and wait on that one. But there's no question about it. Sharks are being negatively impacted by entanglement all around the world, and it's causing them needless harm and suffering. Now, it's unlikely sharks are being entangled by plastic straws unless someone managed to tie one in a circle. But they absolutely could be ingesting them. After the entanglement research paper, I wrote another one all about the ingestion of microplastics by sharks here in the UK, in which all of the sharks that I sampled, just shy of 70% of them had some evidence of microplastic ingestion, over two thirds. And what was one of the more common plastic materials that they were ingesting? Oh yeah, polypropylene, the stuff that plastic straws are made out of. 25% of the microplastics that we found within those sharks were polypropylene microplastics. Polypropylene, to be fair, is used in all sorts of different plastic materials. So it's it's tough to know exactly where it came from before it broke down into tiny pieces. But you can bet that at some point in time, sharks have ingested polypropylene microplastics that originally derived from a plastic straw. And the damage that that microplastic ingestion can do is endless. If it's sharp enough and big enough, it can cause lacerations to their stomach linings or their intestinal tracts. If they eat enough of it, it can cause false satiation, which basically means an animal feels like it's full, but it's not actually full, and then doesn't end up eating its normal food, so it just starves to death. But then there's all the chemical impacts as well. Microplastics absorb a whole array of toxic chemicals, 
and additives, which can then be released into the shark's body after it's been ingested, which cause havoc on endocrine systems, immune systems, reproductive systems, the list goes on. So you can see something as simple as a plastic straw being thrown away and then breaking down into smaller pieces in the marine environment can cause serious harm inside a shark's body. Now, I'm not gonna win John at the Trump administration because they've made their decision here. It's a political one and they're probably not gonna change it. And I know that various states around America have the ability to implement their own laws on plastic and how it's used within that state. But my appeal here is to you, the people. Is having your drink from a plastic straw that important? I get it, paper straws aren't the most pleasing thing in the world, but so what? What difference does that make to your life? In the vast majority of cases, it's minimal. Sure, there's people with medical disabilities who may need to use a straw, but they are the overwhelming minority of cases. But I imagine for most people, using a paper straw or God forbid, using no straw at all, doesn't make that much of a difference. But for marine animals like whales, seals, dolphins, turtles, and sharks, you choosing to not use that plastic straw can make a difference to their lives. Just like how you decided to not use that plastic bag or not buy that six pack can of beers with the plastic ring that holds them together. Or you decided to cut that plastic packaging strap before you threw it away. All of those things can potentially make a difference. I always found it so strange when plastic became politicized. What a weird hill for governments to die on. Like, come on. It's a straw. Anyway, guys, there's my plastic pollution rant. Make sure you let me know what you think in the comments. If that's not enough for you though, and you wanna hear some more about my research, you can check out this video here. In it, we look into the research where myself and shark scientist Austin Gallagher to find some wacky feeding behaviors in nurse sharks. It's really cool, so make sure you give it a click here.